Hello, saints. Peace, love, and grace of Christ Jesus be with all of you. I hope everybody's having a wonderful day today. In conclusion of our study in the book of Acts, we started with chapter 1, and, well, several months later, we finished with Acts chapter 28. And for those of you that have been following the study, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, my hope and my prayer is that you now have a greater understanding of right division and dispensations. We've seen why the book of Acts is called a transitional book. And you can also look at the book of Acts as a bridge of sorts. Now, let me explain what I mean by a bridge. God makes a covenant with Abraham, and this covenant extends down to Jacob. And we know his name was changed to Israel. Then we see the creation of 12 distinct tribes of Israelites, Jacob's seed line, if you will. This physical creation of the 12 tribes is the physical birth of Israel birth by water part of the covenant is that the 12 tribes of Israel will would inherit the earth and rule over the Gentiles as kings and priests but before they could become kings and priests over the earthly kingdom their prophets told them that their Messiah would have to come revealing himself to the nation of Israel and after receiving their Messiah they would be reborn spiritually as a nation this is what Jesus is talking about when he said, Ye must be born again. The word ye here is in reference to the entire nation of Israel. It is plural. He was talking about the nation of Israel, who had to be born physically, and they were under Abraham and Jacob, but they needed to be born again spiritually. The phrase born again in the context of what Jesus was, was speaking about has nothing to do with the body of Christ today. He was speaking about the nation of Israel. Now, it's important to understand that during this time, the nation of Israel was under the Mosaic system of law. And we know that they were extremely dogmatic about their laws as well. Even to the point that their zeal for the law actually became their downfall. Blinding them from the truth. However, the problem they had as well is that they couldn't keep the laws. They, keep, they kept falling short continuously in the Mosaic system. Also, they worshipped other gods. They fell into idolatry. They cheated on our one true and only living God. And God's word tells us that God issued Israel a bill of divorcement because of her adultery, which led them into all kinds of problems, slavery just being one of them. And this is how they got the name harlot a picture of a cheating wife unfaithful to her husband remember in our study when I said Israel rejected God three times well here when they seek other gods and cheat on God this is the first rejection they rejected the father the second time they're given a chance they reject God again at the crucifixion and the third time they're given a chance they reject God again when they reject the Holy Spirit speaking through the prophet Stephen. They killed Stephen by stoning him. We see prior to the crucifixion that God tries to reconcile with Israel. And the only way to do that is to provide a perfect sacrifice. His son Jesus, he came manifested in the flesh to present himself as the Messiah to the nation of Israel. And they rejected him again. And this leads us into the four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The story of God attempting to reconcile with his wife, his bride, Israel. So the four Gospels is a continuation of Israel's promises. It's the fulfillment of the prophecies written by the prophets about their coming Messiah. Keep in mind, the four Gospels are all about Israel, their kingdom program, the ushering in of their promised earthly kingdom. Gentiles are nowhere in the picture at this point. That's why Jesus said, I came for the lost sheep of who? The house of Israel. He came to reconcile with the Jews. But because the Jews were so wrapped up in the Mosaic system of law, they couldn't see that their Messiah was standing right in front of them. They denied Jesus. They killed the Son, and their promised earthly kingdom is postponed. But since our Lord is loving and forgiving and a, a merciful God, he still gives Israel another chance even after having him crucified on the cross. 
This other chance is through the prophet Stephen. This time, God approaches Israel as who? The Holy Spirit. So at this point, they rejected the Father by cheating on him. They killed the Son, Jesus, the crucifixion. And they blasphemed and rejected the Holy Spirit at the stoning of Stephen. So what, what is God to do at that point? Well, God being God, knowing all things, knew from the before the foundation of the world that this would happen. And he already had a plan. Well, in comes Saul. Before we get to Saul or Paul, it's important to recognize that while Jesus was on earth, he established some of the kings and priests from the prophecies. The, and these are the apostles. They were part of God's kingdom program to come. We call this the dispensation of the kingdom or the kingdom gospel, the four gospels. So while Jesus was here, thousands upon thousands of Jews became believers in the kingdom program. And we call this group of believers the little flock. And when Jesus was killed at the cross, this left the little flock without a shepherd. So God makes Peter the shepherd, along with the rest of the apostles overseeing this little flock. These are all Jews. Keep that in mind. So when the Jews reject their third chance, the Holy Spirit, by killing Stephen, something needs to be done. Well, God already had a plan. God postpones that kingdom program and reveals a new program which Paul called the mystery. And when there's a new program, you also need a new shepherd that understands that new program. And that's where Paul comes in. Paul is shown a secret, a mystery, that God would create what we know today as the body of Christ. Not only for the Jews, but also for the Gentiles, reconciling all people in one group. The kingdom program for the little flock was all about faith plus law, this new dispensation of grace under Paul is all about faith without the law, belief alone without works to earn salvation. But there's a problem. Remember, there's thousands upon thousands upon thousands of Jews living. This little flock. They didn't just disappear when Jesus was crucified. Okay, they're still here. And now they're under the apostles ministry, the kingdom program. And here's Paul commissioned to create a new program under a new system while having to deal with this kingdom's little flock of people. And this caused lots of friction because Paul, Paul's teaching was contradictory to the apostles' teaching. One with laws, one without laws. That's the very situation that caused all, most of Paul's problems. Almost getting him killed dozens of times, beat up, uh, mugged, uh, thrown in, in prison, eventually martyred. Paul's battle for over 30 years wasn't necessarily with the Gentiles. The Gentiles loved Paul. Paul's battle for over 30 years was with his brethren, the Jews, his kinsmen, most of them believing Jews, the kingdom saints, this little flock under Peter. And during that generation of both kingdom saints and both uh, of Christ saints, there's a transition that takes place between the kingdom saints and the body of Christ. There needs to be a bridge of source between Peter's program and Paul's program. And this bridge that takes place is what the book of Acts is all about. The process of removing Peter's program and replacing it with Paul's program. We call these programs dispensations or administrations. So we see why the book of Acts is so important to understand. We learn in Acts how Paul establishes the mystery gospel, the gospel of grace, the formation of the body of Christ, our program today. And once Peter's little flock generation comes to a close, so does the kingdom program. It comes to a full stop until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. In other words, the kingdom program has been paused momentarily for 2,000 years while God reconciles all of mankind, both Jews and Gentiles in one body, the body of Christ. At the completion of this reconciliation, there's gonna be the harpazo, the rapture. This body of believers today will be taken off the earth and God will restart the kingdom program once again. Now, why does God have to restart the kingdom program? You might be wondering. Why doesn't he just end everything with the rapture? Well, that's a good question. God has to restart the kingdom program because God made promises to Israel. God made a covenant with Israel. 
God always fulfills his promises and his covenants and has to fulfill Israel's promises that they would become kings and priests over the earth, that God would bring the kingdom of heaven down to the earth and would rule and reign with Israel over mankind. So you see, God has to restart the kingdom program to finish what's been started. And that can only be done after stopping the mystery program, after removing the body of Christ at the rapture. The recommencing of the kingdom program will happen by uh, judgment on Israel. Daniel's 70th week. Israel will be baptized by fire, by trials and tribulations, purifying them to become kings and priests as promised. And when they call on the name of the Lord, it will be finished. Then Jesus will bring the kingdom of heaven with him and place it on the earth. And the nation of Israel will finally be born again spiritually. But only after Jesus judges the earth when he comes. He's going to bring an army of angels with him to cleanse the earth. He's going to remove unbelievers and then usher in believers into the earthly kingdom. We know this is the sheep and goat judgment. So you see, our study in the book of Acts is that it is this bridge. It's the transition from Peter to Paul. And that's why Acts is so very important to understand. The symptom of not understanding the book of Acts is a bunch of people still teaching the kingdom program even today. You see them everywhere, screaming, repent, stop sinning, and be baptized. Jesus is coming. Well, that's the kingdom gospel. Doesn't that gospel sound familiar? It should. That's the kingdom gospel, Peter's program, that was paused over 2,000 years ago. Plus, they're not using the biblical definition of the word repent correctly, as we studied. In our program, Dispensation of Grace, Paul's Mystery, we see it 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, this is Paul speaking, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, but which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Now, why does Paul say, if ye believed in vain? If you continue reading on, you'll discover that there were some people who didn't believe in the resurrection. They believed in Jesus, but they didn't believe he rose again from the grave. You see, they believed in vain. Their belief was worthless without the power of the resurrection. If you compare Israel's program against the body of Christ program, prophecy versus mystery, then you can see the uniqueness of the gospel of grace for us today. Then suddenly Paul's books come to life. The Bible uh, starts to make sense. It all comes together and the puzzle is brought together. Right division and dispensation will keep you protected from all the false doctrines going around today if you make right division and dispensation a priority in learning God's word. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. When you learn how to rightly divide God's word, you discover that God designed the past 6,000 years into different administrations or dispensations of time. Ephesians 3 verse 1 for this cause I Paul the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God okay there's that administration dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you or okay from Paul to the Gentiles how that by revelation he may known unto me the mystery as I wrote a four and few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge and the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. You see, it was only made known to Paul, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and their prophets by the Spirit, through Paul. Okay, this mystery, this dispensation of the grace of God came directly from Jesus to Paul, and then Paul spoke to the others underneath him. Verse 6, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body, this body of Christ, and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister, 
who made Paul the minister? Did Peter and the other 11, did they vote and make Paul a part of their group? No. Jesus Christ himself came down and made Paul that minister. Okay? He was chosen. Paul was chosen by God to be an apostle. Not part of the others, but a, an apostle over the mystery, the body of Christ. Continuing on. According to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least of the saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul's books, Romans through Philemon, are all about the body of Christ and the mystery program. After the little flock's generation dies off, the prophetic program is everything that's been prophesied to happen to the nation of Israel in the Old Testament, the four Gospels, and also Hebrews through Revelation. From the physical birth of the nation of Israel to their spiritual rebirth, the fulfillment of all the promises God made with them, Israel. Notice how the Bible is written. The Old Testament is to, for, and about the nation of Israel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four Gospels, again, is about the nation of Israel, the kingdom saints. The book of Acts is a transition, this bridge, from the kingdom to grace, the body of Christ. And we see Romans through Philemon is all about the body of Christ. These are Paul's books. And then, after the rapture, we see Hebrews through Revelation, back to the kingdom gospel, written to the tribulation saints in Daniel's 70th week, second coming, and into the 1,000 year reign. If you recall from our Acts study, we discovered just how the Bible is organized. I pointed out, for example, looking at the New Testament, it's not arranged or organized alphabetically or chronologically, and I'm sure they just didn't throw a bunch of books together and call it good. The men who wrote and organized the New Testament, the Bible, were guided by the Holy Spirit, who is God, to organize the New, Tes the New Testament dispensationally. That's a fact, and it cannot be disputed. First, we see the continuation of the Kingdom program into the four Gospels. Then, the postponement of the kingdom, the transition from kingdom to grace in the book of Acts. Then, the next 13 books are all about grace, the grace program, Paul's mystery gospel, the body of Christ. Then, at the end of Paul's books, ending with the rapture, we see another shift, another change, and it's back to the kingdom program once again in Hebrews through Revelation. So, it's clearly arranged according to dispensations. That's evident. Anyone who denies that is either blind or has an agenda to teach the kingdom program in the wrong period of time. Or some religion or denomination, and yes, they're out there right now, we know it. The mysteries revealed to Paul are not in the Old Testament, are not in the four Gospels, and are not in Hebrews through Revelation. You're only going to find the mysteries within Paul's books, Romans through Philemon. Paul's salvation began in Acts chapter 9 on the road to Damascus. A completely new gospel, one separate from the kingdom gospel, and one designed to save everyone, both Jews and Gentiles, together in one body. Under the prophetic program, Israel ha is promised the earthly kingdom. Under the mystery program, the body of Christ is promised the heavenly kingdom. Not the kingdom of heaven, but the heavenly kingdom. There's a difference. Our promise and rewards will be in heaven, over the government of heaven, our dominions, over seats and principalities and powers and thrones and so on and so on. Now, in order to bridge or transition from the gospel of the kingdom over to the gospel of grace, which is what the book of Acts shows us, God used the time of a generation to accomplish it. From Peter and the other 11 apostles over to Paul and the body of Christ. The next time God bridges the two dispensations from the body, back, body of Christ back to the God, uh, the kingdom gospel, God will use the rapture to accomplish this transition because there's really no time. 
the world goes straight into the seven year tribulation or Daniel's 70th week. God will use Daniel's 70th week to purify Israel by fire. This is when they're baptized by fire. If you recall, there's three baptisms that Israel has to go through. First, by water, then by the Holy Spirit, then by fire in Daniel's 70th week. Israel will be purged through great tribulation until they finally call on the name of the Lord to be delivered physically. Read Joel 2, 28-32. Looking at Joel, and let me remind you that Peter and Paul both quoted Joel 2. Peter quotes Joel 2 in Acts 2, and Paul quotes Joel 2 in Romans 10, both speaking about the tribulation period and the second coming of the Lord Jesus and about the nation of Israel. Looking at Joel 2, verse 28, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days, in what days? Those days, we're talking about Daniel 70th week, will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Paul and Peter used the word saved here instead of the word delivered. Where are they going to be delivered? This is very important to understand. It tells us, For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. Not all over the earth. No, no, no. Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. As the Lord hath said, in who? In all the Gentiles? In all the Jews? Everybody left on earth? No, no. It says, And in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. This is speaking about the nation of Israel calling on the name of the Lord to be delivered at the end of the second, uh, at the end of Daniel's 70th week, at the second coming. They will call on the name of the Lord to be delivered physically. Jesus will come and save them physically. Okay, so in conclusion, our study on the entire book of Acts taught us all about this bridge, this transition of two Gospels. And our study revealed to us when Paul wrote his 13 books, his conflict with the kingdom saints, his imprisonments, all his persecutions and testing, you know, that he went through 30 plus years of Paul's life and ministry. So we see just how important the book of Acts really is. Unfortunately, it's not being taught at all today. Very little. And some of the reasons why it's not being taught today, first of all, is that the book of Acts is a complete confusion without right division. In order to understand the book of Acts, you have to rightly divide. Second reason Acts is not being taught today is because understanding the book of Acts, rightly divided, puts a huge spotlight on false teaching. It exposes all the twisted denominational teachings and systems in the world today. It exposes their inability to understand God's word. So they stay away from it. All right. Until next time, peace, love, grace of Christ Jesus be with all of you saints. Lord willing, I will see you on the next study.